So good morning or good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ed Delaney. I'm the current chair of the Perfusion Program Directors Council. I'm also the current vice chair of the Accreditation Committee for Perfusion Education. And I'm a past member of the American Board of Cardiovascular Perfusion. And what I wanna do is talk to you and explain a little bit about what the Perfusion Program Directors Council has been up to, uh, what our role is uh, in perfusion, and how we tend to make changes over the next few years. If you look at the current slide, uh, you see our new logo. Uh, we've been updating our website and I'm in concurrence in subsequent slides, I'm gonna talk about that. General purpose of the Perfusion Program Directors Council. Uh, each of us obviously are running a program uh, and we're doing that with a clinical coordinator uh, or we are a dual role clinical coordinator. Uh, so we're educating and mentoring students every day, but this council itself is there to provide an exchange of information on scientific educational uh, issues uh, that come up uh, with the program directors. And what we're looking to do is enhance the education process and the technology that we're using to uh, educate. So we provide representation to and become a vehicle for the receipt of information uh, from other perfusion organizations, professional societies uh, that have input into the profession, its education and accreditation processes, and we provide a unified voice for perfusion education. So one of the interesting things that you may or may not know about the program directors, um, we council, we have a role on the Accreditation Committee for Perfusion Education. That's what we call the ACPE. The ACPE is a COA, that's a committee on accreditation, uh, and we fall under KHAP accreditation. So the responsibilities of a program director are as follows, and these are set forth in the standards and guidelines that are part of the ACPE standards and guidelines. The program director must be responsible for the organization, administration, and periodic review, continued development, and general effectiveness of their programs. The clinical assignments of the program director must allow adequate time for administration, teaching, and responsibilities. Uh, you have to have a degree equivalent to the level that the program confers. So if you're certificate, you need certificate. If you're certificate and bachelor's, you would need a bachelor's degree. Uh, if you are a master's program, you would need a master's degree. And then if you're a PhD program, you would need a PhD. You need five years of professional experience as a perfusionist, two years of experience uh, as a clinical instructor accredited uh, in an accredited educational program, or experience in instructional methodology, curriculum design, program planning, or counseling. So in addition to these qualifications, the program director also serves as the clinical coordinator in some, or, uh, in some programs. And this person must have current uh, American Board of Cardiovascular Perfusion certification. The program director should always hold an advanced degree. This is where the programs currently are. So this is where each of us uh, kind of resides, our home base for the schools. There are currently 21 um, programs and some are in the accreditation process and some are fully accredited. But in the, in the last two years, we've had two programs that are still in the accreditation process and two new programs. So we're a total of 21 program directors that are currently on the council. Uh, and I believe at this point, 19 have voting rights. This is who the perfusion program directors collaborate with. So we collaborate with the two national uh, societies the American Academy of Cardiovascular Perfusion, the American Society of Extracorporal Technology, the American Board of Cardiovascular uh, Perfusion, our credentialing body, uh, also the Extracorporal Life Support Organization, the ACP, that's our Committee on Accreditation, uh, the Commission on Accreditation Allied Health Education and Program, that's our accreditor, our overall accreditor. And then from time to time, we, we liaison with a number of other perfusion organizations, state societies, et cetera. Just uh, who is KHAP? Well, they're the Commission on Accreditation of Allied Health Education. Uh, and their mission is to provide value to stakeholders by setting standards for quality assurance and health professions uh, education. 
And that organization accredits over 2,500 programs in over 30 health professions and including perfusion. So accreditation, essentially what it is, is uh, you're reviewing the processes uh, that assure educational programs meet minimal standards. And for us as program directors, we submit information to the COA, the ACPE, every year. And then there's a full review about every 10 years or sooner. So we report any kind of changes, uh, sufficiency of resources, including personnel, facility, program facilities, instructional equipment, supplies, and clinical sites. And then a large portion of our evaluation processes for each program, and this is what a lot of us liaison on this, on this committee, um, is retention of students, positive placement of students, um, American Board Credentialing Exam Success, graduate satisfaction, employer satisfaction, summative measures, and verification of student competency. So why is accreditation important? It's important because it assures education programs meet minimal standards. It contributes to the patient's safety uh, and qualifies graduates for certification through the American Board of Cardiovascular Perfusion process. So the ACPA, and I, I think it's important to talk about this group because they have such an impact on the programs and accreditation. Uh, and this is a group that, that cooperates with uh, KHAP to establish, maintain, and promote appropriate standards of quality for education programs in perfusion. And essentially what they do is they evaluate the perfusion education program and recommend accreditation to KHAP uh, that has the overall final decision whether a program is accredited or not. And these are the sponsoring organizations. So each organization has two members on the ACP and they, and they have an alternate. So the members are the American Academy of Cardiovascular Perfusion, the American Board of Cardiovascular Perfusion, Perfusion Program Directors Council, American Society of Extracorporal Technology, American Association for Thoracic Surgery, Society for, of Thoracic Surgeons, Society of Cardiovascular Anesthesiologists. And one of the biggest things that the ACPE does is they review and set the standards and guidelines. Uh, and that's the standards and guidelines that all the programs have to follow. So the Perfusion Program Directors Council has a number of updates. And the biggest update that we have uh, for this talk is the new website. So we've been in the process of picking a new logo. And, and we've been uh, redesigning our website. And the reason we're doing this uh, is because we're looking to get additional information out to the program directors themselves, the perfusionists, the students, and the clinical preceptors. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about the additional programs we've added. We're gonna talk about our goal of streamlining processes, and then our, our continuous goal of liaisoning with perfusion organizations. Recently, one of the liaisoning tasks that we did was we aligned with the American board and we've agreed, both, both groups have agreed to post our programmatic numbers from all the perfusion programs and the attrition rate of the American board on both websites. So there'll be a tab on the perfusion program director council's website where you'll have the attrition rates uh, from the American board and you'll have the programmatic numbers of the number of students we've accepted and graduated. And the reason this is important is because we're trying to provide better information for people to make decisions. We're trying to provide better information for all those future perfusion talks that you kind of sit through uh, to have a better understanding of current trends and employment numbers and what the needs of the profession are when it comes to putting out programs, putting out perfusionists uh, and where we are. On our program, you're gonna see some, some things like calendar of events. So we're gonna have our events and meetings. You're gonna program information. So you'll be able to go up and look at each program and see the information of the program, the number of months. You'll be able to see the current director. You'll be able to have a link to the website. Um, there'll be a, a spot for resources for the program directors themselves. Uh, so committee work, things like that, that we're currently working on. And then there'll be resources for preceptors and clinical instructors. 
There'll be resources for students. We're designing a student web page uh, with the goal to put student opportunities on there uh, so they can use that as a resource. And then this is kind of our current uh, uh, opening web page. And what you see on there, uh, basically it'll tell a little bit about the program director's council. Um, it'll have our calendar. It'll list all of the programs. Uh, you'll be able to look at each of the 21 programs that are currently out there. You'll, there'll be a number of resources. Uh, and then they'll have contact information for the program directors where you will have frequently asked questions. And we'll also have uh, an email address where we can answer questions. And then, like I, like I said before, we're 21 directors with, experience, with vast experience in perfusion with diverse backgrounds. So this is a part of the website and this is the programs and this is kind of what it'll look like as, as we finish in building it. So you'll have the programmatic information, uh, the director, the degree conferred. Uh, you'll have a link to the website, uh, phone number, you'll have uh, address, et cetera. And that'll be for all 21 programs. So the program directors themselves have a committee homepage, and I thought it was important to talk about some of the committees we have. We have a website committee, obviously, to uh, make sure that we're keeping current with the technology and to provide value services uh, to the perfusionist students, uh, preceptors, and each other. Uh, we've at, we're actually looking at what information is out there on international accreditation um, and, and where programs are with liaisoning with um, other schools, other countries, other programs. And we're just gathering information at this time. And then one of the newest committees is a standardization committee. What we really want to do is we want to streamline processes. We want to streamline processes with our COA, uh, the ACPE. We want to streamline processes with the American board and collaborate with these groups. And we also want to streamline our own process among e amongst each program. Uh, here's one of the examples of the resources. This is where uh, you're, you'll be able to find the preceptor education uh, information. We actually have a link to the ACP website uh, where you can go on and do some preceptor education. Uh, we put the, the information on our website too. And then we have the attrition statistics. And this is where you'll see the programmatic numbers and the American board attrition rates. So this is the programmatic numbers that you'll be able to see under that resource. And so it, it tells you the degree conferred, the school, uh, admissions for the last two years and what, uh, what we're graduating in the last two years. And then if you look at the very end, uh, you, you, can see, you can see the summative numbers of what we've admitted and what we've graduated. And the one thing I can say is at 269, that's not exact because there are some programs that are that are more than 21 months. Uh, there's two and three years. So that is not an exact number. So it doesn't mean that if you um, had had um, 246 admitted that you should necessarily graduate 246 in that year of 2021. But what it means is just essentially what we admitted that year and what we are graduating that year. Other students may still be in a process if it's a longer program. And then what, we, what we're gonna have up there is the American Board of Attrition Rate. So we have these numbers kind of side by side with each other. And if you looked, if you saw the last page, you saw that we were putting out 220 uh, perfusionists in 2022. And the, the law certifications for 2021 are about 112. So I borrowed a couple of slides uh, from the liaison panel. Um, and what this slide shows, it shows the last 10 years of CCP growth. And so we're currently around 4,644 certified clinical perfusionists in the US. This is the 10 year gain versus the 10 year loss of CCPs. Uh, so it's a gain and loss for each of those years. And if you look at 2021, we gained 239 perfusionists and we only lost 112. And this is based on certification uh, numbers. And 
And then this slide shows the annual percent of CCP's net gain over the past 10 years. Um, and you're currently looking at almost, I guess, about two and a half percent from 20 to 21 about that. So 2021 was 2.69% gain. So for the Perfusion Program Directors Council, the goals are to continue to liaison with the perfusion organizations uh, and be responsive to changes within the profession and kind of lead some of the changes within the profession. Uh, we're going to continue to update and improve our website to make it more user friendly for the perfusion community and provide value added services. And then our goals are to promote safety and protection of the public, as well as enhance the attainment of perfusion knowledge to the education process. We're going to continue to work with CCPs, educators, experts to maintain and improve the education process. And that's all for my talk today. And I, you know, if there's any questions, I am going to jump on live for questions if that's uh, if that's possible. Well, I just want to thank you for your time. Uh, I want to thank uh, Texas Heart for allowing me to talk uh, and inviting me to this forum. I think uh, opportunities to promote and and provide education uh, on any of these organizations is always really helpful to all the perfusionists. So uh, thank you.